So um, you see the words, big, bold, the good life. What do those words mean to you? What does a good life look like for you? Take a moment and think about a good life for you. Is it a stroll on the beach? We know who thinks that. <laughs> Is it a walk along a, a ridge of a mountain? Maybe in Colorado. Is it um, sitting on a deck overlooking a lake? Well, maybe it's sitting in a boat fishing on a lake. What's that good life look like for you? Think about the good life that you've been hoping for, dreaming about, seeking. How about shouting it out and sharing it with the rest of us? All the above. All the above. <laughs> Getting in your RV and going. <laughs> what does that good life look like for you? Right now. Griff? Yeah, because we love you. I heard something else. Friendships. Friendships. Family. Family. Grandbaby. <laughs> Got a name that for her. <laughs> so if you had that good life, would you have everything that you want? Would you have everything that you need? Could you have everything that you need? You know, I learned early on that money does buy a bunch of stuff. But um, what money doesn't buy, what money cannot buy, is happiness. Now, they've been advertising this refrigerator on TV. It's really cool. <laughs> it's really big and it's got these really cool adjustable shelves. And, and, and somehow or other you can look in it and it kind of somehow helps you make your grocery list. And I haven't mentioned this to Mr. Campbell, but uh, <laughs> he's here second hour, so okay, now he heard it. Uh, but wow, that would make um, this time of year a lot easier. It would, I mean, honestly, in the holiday time when you get all those groceries, you've got to shove them into that refrigerator and that's always um, got more stuff in it than it needs. Um, that refrigerator would bring a little happiness. Um, and then <laughs> there's the self-parking car. Okay, now that could bring joy into my life because it, it, you can get into a, a, a parking spot in one shot. And, and they, they promise you're not going to back into anybody's car. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but that's what they say on, they show on TV. I mean, without, you know, when I lived on the East Coast and I was practicing parallel parking all the time, I could do it, no problem, but we don't do it that much out here, and parallel parking is a problem for me. I cannot do it, and I see the, that car, and I think, well, that could bring me happiness. But for how long? How long would that really bring me happiness. Um, for those of us that are doing the Adam Hamilton study enough, um, he says that uh, achieving success is not the same as achieving happiness. And so as I was reading the, that chapter this week and preparing for the class I'll teach tomorrow, um, you know, I, I, just, I just kept thinking and thinking and thinking about happiness, and so I could not help myself, and, and this is where people say, what do you do, what do pastors do? They read. 
I, I, I just read and I research and I read and then I read some more and then I research some more and then I read some more. And so I started looking up all these things about happiness. And um, I found this 10 Habits of Happy People. They slow down to appreciate life's little pleasures. They exercise. They take care of the temple of the Holy Spirit. So that's a pretty good idea. They spend money on other people. They think about the needs of others. They surround themselves with the right people, people that are uplifting, people that are good for their spirits. They stay positive. You know, sometimes it's hard, but they work on it. They get enough sleep. They have deep conversations. They help others. They make every effort to be happy. And we know that sometimes that's hard because sometimes when you're sad and things aren't going well and the world seems to be falling down all around you, it's hard, but sometimes you have to do that hard work. And, and they have a growth mindset, wanting to move forward and get ahead. And I thought, well, those are pretty good habits, and those would be things that I can get behind, but, you know, there's a lot missing in that. And so I continue to research and read, and, you know, there are countless articles, and, and many of which um, sounded like someone's get rich scheme. Um, but then, then I came upon this, and it was written, and I um, forgot to write the guy's last name, but he's a Navy SEAL. His first name is Brent. And uh, ten, 16 ways to live a happier, more fulfilling life. Prioritize your time wisely. Build relationships rather than gather possessions. Take what you can from life, but always give back. Be accountable for your words and your actions. Be disciplined in your personal as well as your professional life. You know, a lot of times those of us who are working, you know, are pretty mindful of how we need to behave at work, and then we get a little slouchy when we go home. So both your personal and professional life Expunge hate from your heart. Forgive yourself as well as others. He says, put your family first. And I would amend that to say, put God and then family as a priority. Find purpose in your life's work. Chase your dreams and never quit. Pursue passions that are bigger than yourself. Keep striving. Don't hold on to anything too tight. Leave no regrets. Lead by example. Protect those who cannot protect themselves. Strive to improve a little bit each and every day. Now these are excellent goals. And I thought, you know, we could, we could think about those and, and we could strive to do them and, and then we can consider um, the many more things. And, but I, you know, so I kept researching and then I came across something that I have never seen before. Do you know that there's a World Happiness Report? They have been doing that for years. There is a World Happiness Report. In 2018, Finland, was the top of the list, um, was the, the country that was the highest rated country in the world. 156 countries um, are um, evaluated on a, a group of criteria, and it had to do about the things that supported life in a very uplifting, good way that created happiness. But now happiness didn't necessarily mean they were the richest countries, and happiness didn't necessarily mean that they had all of the greatest advances. It meant that the people in those countries received the support and encouragement and, and had the social justice and, and the social structures that allowed all of the people in the country to feel good about themselves. What's interesting about the report is, is that not only do they follow the, the citizens of the country, but they, they follow the migrants and the immigrants in the, in the country. And it was important that the immigrants into the country felt as good about the country as the people that were citizens of the country. Isn't that interesting for us to consider? But um, that's a personal little side note. But I mean, 
so and, and, and just for our minds to think about, the f countries that have been at the top for the past four years are Finland and um, Finland and Denmark and Austria and Switzerland. Um, and, and countries that who don't necessarily um, have um, the highest, richest um, per capita, and, and but their desire to have social structures that um, bring about a good life for each of their people um, is uppermost in their minds. And so I started to think about this good life and what it looked like across the whole wide world and how different it was and, and the things that were preventing some of us from that good life. Because at the end of this report, one of the things they were saying is for the countries that weren't doing so well on this report, possibly the United States of America. Uh, but anyway, um, you know, one of the, some of the problems were obesity and um, opioid use and depression. And so, you know, we need to be thinking about things that we're hearing in the news about ourselves and, and some of the chronic problems. And, and what can we be doing to have this good life? And, and, and the question for me is, what does God want for us? What is God looking for when God is looking for us to have a good life? You know, it, it, you know we, we can come up with all the ideas we want, but you know, when, when we talk to the kids with regularity, we talk about the great commandment. We talk about it in every single different form as we possibly can, but it, it's pretty much one way or another. We're trying to constantly lay this foundation upon which they hear that we are to love God and we are to love one another. You know, and, and, and we, you know, also love ourselves, take care of ourselves, but to love God and to love one another above all else. And so we know that God wants us to build good, strong relationships. And, and that God is so determined to have us build good, strong relationships and have a good, strong relationship with us that God chose to come. And when God chose to come in the form of Jesus Christ and, and live amongst us, God showed us the way, the truth, and the life. He showed us the way to achieve the very things that God desires most for us so that we could have that good life. That we could really be living the kind of life that God wants us to have. God's not worried about Maria having that refrigerator that's going to you know, look pretty in her, re in her kitchen and help her make her grocery list. I still don't know how that works, but I'm going to keep figuring it out. <laughs> but, you know, what God wants is, is for my spirit to be at ease and to my mind to be comforted and for my soul to feel compassion for each and every one of you each and every day on the days when it's easy for me and on the days when it's not. And for me to be concerned about justice issues not only for our community in southwest Topeka, but you know, east Topeka and north Topeka and, and beyond Topeka. You know, we, we talk a lot about the needs of Topeka because heavens knows Topeka has lots of needs, but then we also know that there's parts of our state, parts of our country, parts of our world, parts of our world where God's hurt, God's heart is hurting because people don't have all of their needs meet. And when Jesus came, the little ones told us that, that Jesus cared about that. Jesus cared about taking care of them. They told me at 9 o'clock and they told me at 10.15 that it was important to Jesus that people were cured and that people had food. And if it was important to Jesus, it needs to be important to us. That good life that we're seeking, that very good life, is a life in which we seek the way, the truth, and the life as Jesus showed us to lead. Because that is the life that is enough for us to lead in God's eyes. And that's enough for us because that will provide us the contentment and the joy that we need. May all the glory be to God. Amen. <laughs>